Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our session. My name is Marie Norden, and I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I will let my co-hosts introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I am Mariana, and I am a Fedora contributor since 2016. Hey all, I'm Shumantro. Um, I work for the Fedora QV team. I have been in Fedora around 2016, uh, March, so it's been like a long, long journey for me. Since everyone's sharing, I, I started in 2013 with Fedora. So we are here today to talk about uh, Fedora's community outreach revamp. And uh, I'm going to start out today with a little bit of history how did we get here? And uh, yeah, basically that. So the ambassador program for Fedora is a long running program. It's been around for over 15 years and it's enjoyed a lot of success in its time. I would say over the years, it, it came up against some struggles, um, just changes in structure in who is participating um, in people's lives. And beyond that, I think we can say maybe the ambassador team grew, but it wasn't sustainable. So, um, so you know, it was kind of like a problem as I came into this position. <laughs> uh, people were feeling a little bit disjointed from the program, um, like they weren't sure what to do. We had a couple changes in how the finance was structured. So things were just a bit confusing, right? So when I came in, I actually had a chance to connect with some team members in my team at Red Hat, the open source program office. And we kind of looked at the ambassador program as a case study for how to implement change. So from that, I was inspired to write up um, a proposal to change it. Beyond that, we had other teams involved, right? We had the join seg, which kind of came out of maybe the, um, what, how do I say this? Uh, it came out of the unproductivity of ambassadors. So we had that doing really well. We also had com ops, which existed before the join team, before I came on even. So, and before Mindshare. So we have all these different teams, uh, who's doing what and in different ways, different parts of these teams had been kind of left behind. So when I wrote the proposal, I included everything in there so that we could really figure out what the outreach teams were doing. So after I did the proposal, put it to the Mindshare team committee and it got approved after we completed some um, community feedback, we put that right back in there and uh, we got started to work. And uh, the first thing we did was get co-leads, which um, are Mariana and Sumatro, and I cannot say enough about how much work that they've put in um, to this. I'm going to let them talk about that work, but um, that's how we got here. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mariana. Thanks, Marie. So I joined the revamp in July 2020 from the Mindshare ticket where uh, Marie has initially posted the idea for the revamp. And once we agreed on the colleagues of this, which were going to be Sumantra, myself, and have Marie as a, uh, a supportive member, we uh, we started planning ahead on what uh, our next steps are going to be. So we uh, we initially created a Trello board for documentation and started putting action items there, and we created timelines for our action items um, and how these are going to be implemented in the future. And we also have a public hack and Z file where we keep notes on our weekly meetings. So the three of us meet uh, every uh, every Tuesday. Um, once we were done with our internal planning, we started announcing the revamp to the community 
and we had two, um, two kickoff meetings with community members and we also participated on a council video meeting. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this one is on YouTube, you can, you can check that. Later, we had also an MIA meeting, an Ask Me Anything meeting, where we uh, answered to frequently asked questions uh, about the revamp. Some of them from the community and some of them we came up with them uh, because we thought they are um, interesting information for the community to know about the, the revamp. Our very first um, action item that we took was uh, actually the ambassador's cleanup. This whole effort was to make sure that we have active ambassadors. So we looked back and checked who have been um, inactive for the past six months. So starting from November, this was something that we worked on November and going back six months, we identified who has not been active through their um, FAST account. We identified those ambassadors, we reached out to them and those who didn't uh, respond back, we moved them to the Emeritus group. Later, the, the next action item we worked on was the community outreach survey. This was one of the most interesting things that we have done so far, in my opinion, because the results that we got back from the community from this survey was uh, some of the results I didn't expect them to see. So on this survey, we asked uh, ambassadors and, com and contributors in general, not necessarily people who are officially ambassadors, of how they, um, how they contribute, how they participate in the community, how they organize, how they do outreach in their local communities, and what they wanted to change in the future, what were their proposals. And the most interesting result of all is that we found out that people have been organizing events without actually letting the rest of the federal community know. So they were not asking for help from the Mindshare teams which means that we have a lot of Fedora uh, activity out there and we didn't know about it. Uh, which is a very interesting result and we're, uh, we're working with this piece of information from now on. The latest update we have from uh, the revamp is that starting from two weeks ago, we're now an objective. This was not on our initial plans, but came up due to the uh, the discussions we had with the Council and with the wider Fedora community uh, in the past months. And now we are an approved uh, Fedora objective for the next months. And we will be joining uh, Council meetings. So, so Montre and I are now members of the Council since Marie was already there. And expect updates on the revamp uh, on the upcoming Council meetings. So this is uh, pretty much uh, what we have been worked on so far, and I would like to uh, uh, to have Samantro explain what uh, what the outcome is going to be in the upcoming months. Okay, uh, thank you, Mariana and Marie, for for like kind of briefing up the stuff. Uh, I'm Samantro. I joined with Mariana. Um, uh, when Murray advised us to form this small team to revamp. So one of the core things we wanted to understand that Murray mentioned was to make this program more sustainable. The only biggest factor that we could do was to take this program and make it like a reference model for any other ambassador program to grow. So we took inspiration from other open source ambassador models. And what we did, we, we started our journey to make sure that this becomes a smart, modern, and more approachable ambassador program, like open ambassador program. One of the ways that we figured out we could do that was to make sure that the documentation is really, really clear. So um, one thing that came out of the survey was to make sure that the, the introduction process or the joining process, uh, so-called we call it the onboarding process in Fedora, to be as clear as possible and as low barrier as possible for anybody to enter. That's how we started creating something called role handbooks. And these role handbooks are going to be our um, documentation for reference models for any of outreach teams. Some of them are mentioned by Murray in this 
in the first part of the talk, which was the joint SIG, the com ops, the advocates, and the ambassadors. So all of these would have specific role handbooks of how you would join these teams and how they are going to function. We are looking forward to right now having, um, you know, we heard a lot about how non-coders or a lot of doc documentation folks or translation folks would like to join Fedora project. We have a new thing coming up called Fedora Zine that is going to focus on making sure that the non-contributors get a um, get a chance and awareness to uh, to make sure that they contribute to the project. That's one thing we have kept in mind from the surveys. Another very important thing that we have done um, after looking at the the way that we want to sustain a sustain with a long term strategy is we want to make sure that there is an identity that goes with every single outreach team so they can work not as a single unit but harmoniously together and that's how we are trying to build uh, or translate more of these role handbooks and all the documentation into as many languages as possible and what that would do is to make sure that all of these teams can work together across the globe like a single unit and that's the that's the goal as a as a long term strategy we see a lot of improvement in terms of involvement um, some of these improvements of how we want to involve more people how we want to take this forward um, are shared in our every month blog post as we go on so there is a community blog where we are posting regular updates about this revamp and if if you're interested go uh, go figure out the updates and let us know if we can, you know, take your inputs and make this better. So every um, every month we are probably, or rather a few months back, we rolled out a survey. We're going to have surveys every six months and one year and two years. So that's going to be a part of our long-term strategy to make sure that the involvement keeps going on and the awareness is maintained throughout the program. So that's that's the sum up of all the, how we want to present the outreach program for the new generation. So let's go for the questions. I was just about to hop in and give you your uh, your five minute warning, but no, this is great. Um, I do not see any questions that have um, been asked in, in the session yet. So I'll, I'll throw you a, a couple. Uh, so when are you hoping to sort of have this completed? So we're looking at a 12th to 18th 18 month timeline from the time it was an objective. So uh, I guess middle of 2022, I mean, there's a lot of work and it is the three of us. Um, you know, we hope to get a whole team going of uh, temporary task force, but the reality of pandemic life is it's it hasn't been that easy. So the approach that we have found that works is to approach individuals. We know they're interested in X, Y, Z kind of work. So we've managed to involve uh, people from all the different teams in it, and we have some support, but it is just us kind of powering through a lot of stuff. So it's gonna take some time, but I think we're looking at 12 to 18 months from now. Okay, so I, saw, I know there are some people um, who are new to this whole concept, 42% um, of people said they hadn't heard of the revamp before this talk. Um, so are there things that people who would like to contribute can can do to jump in and help now, or is it uh, still sort of a wait until more things are in place before they can contribute? So yeah, you can totally jump in. The best way to do that is to jump in the Mindshare channel on IRC and kind of just say, hey, I'm interested in working on the revamp and tell us a little bit about what you want to work on. Um, you know, I want to work on documentation. I would like to work on graphics. Uh, I know I want to, I'm great at organizing. So really, if you come to us and have some time, we are absolutely ready to incorporate you into the mix. There is also a Telegram chat, group chat for the uh, TTF. We call it a TTF, a temporary task force. <laughs> uh, a great example, I can share the, the Telegram link uh, in a second. A, a great example where we had a 
more people joining us is when we analyze the survey results. We had very valuable feedback from uh, community members that had experience and that had worked in the in the past with surveys. So yeah, I will share the Telegram chat for anyone who wants to join. Loving the horse that just that just does that was great. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, are there any other questions from the audience? Uh, can I ask the Can I ask the audience a question? Like, what kind of people are here today? I didn't want to make a whole poll question because there's so much, so many different options. But are you like a professional? Do you do community outreach in your organization? You know, if you feel like sharing in the chat, I'm just kind of curious, like, who's here today, and I guess. That's it, really. But I would love to provide any more in information. Oh, T, technical writer. Cool. Cool. Yeah, the join stake is a totally, it's an amazing place to start um, with Fedora. I can just talk a little bit about that since we have some more time. Join stake, they kind of help you learn about the community, the basics, and how it kind of works, gives you a little bit of a taste for the culture, um, and they get you hooked up with the teams that you might be involved um, with working with, RHEL Eng, Engineering Manager. Awesome. Yes, it definitely is. But it's interesting because a lot of the folks that are in Join SIG are also in ComOps, have also been ambassadors. So we know that a lot of these same folks are super interested in outreach and talking the talk about Fedora. Yeah, and I will say that no matter what interested in there's probably some space for it in fedora because you know operating systems need so much more than code they need documentation and design and marketing and outreach and you know all kinds of you know great stuff so find a way to to get started love some more project managers says matthew miller in the chat <laughs> 